how far Iceland is ready to compromise on its uh, fishery policies? Because from what I understand, that is one of the most important uh, sort of corner stones of uh, negotiations. Yes, we, fisheries, as I mentioned, is one of the areas that are outside the EA we need to negotiate. Now, fisheries are a crucial issue for Iceland, uh, not only economically, also politically. It's part of our identity. It's part of our sense of independence. We went uh, through a, a struggle extending our economic zone from 3 to 12 miles, 12 to 50, 50 to 200. Now it's recognized international law, and, uh, and this was a part of securing our economic uh, independence uh, after the war and the decades after the war. And this is the backbone of our economy. Fisheries are about 12% of our GDP, which is uh, huge. In Norway, uh, to compare, it's only 1% or 2%, but fisheries are important in Norway. You can imagine in Iceland, it's 12%. It's 40% of our foreign currency earnings. So we have developed a very efficient economy, uh, sorry, fish, uh, very efficient fishery sector, which is not subsidized, and, and we have very strict management regime. So uh, we think that, and it is essential that we find a special solution that accommodates our concerns, uh, but at the same time recognize the principles of the EU. And I think actually the rules of the EU, the common fisheries policy, is flexible enough to find a special solution that would accommodate Iceland's interests. Uh, if you look at the map and, and the, uh, look into the rules of the EU, you have actually different rules in the Baltic Sea, where you have many countries surrounding the same sea, catching the same stocks. Then you have around the Azor Islands or the Canary Islands or it in the Mediterranean. So you have already inbuilt in the common fisheries bill policy quite mm -hmm. a flexibility. Uh, it's because circumstances differ in these regions and circumstances differ in Iceland as well. And so we are uh, uh, arguing that since circumstances differ in Iceland, we need special arrangements as well. We are an island. Our economic zone does not border any of the economic zones of the EU member states. We, most of the fish in Iceland is local, stays within our economic zone, is only caught by Icelanders. So the argument and logic is different in, in our waters than it is, for example, in the Baltic Sea, where you have many countries catching the same fish uh, with common stocks, because most of our stocks, or 70%, is local and only caught by Icelanders. So the logic is different. Okay. Um, what is a uh, realistic, realistic time for Iceland to join the European Union, the, including negotiations, uh, including referendum? What do you say the realistic time? Well, I have always been very careful talking about uh, time, or uh, we don't have any official di deadlines. Uh, we are quite advanced. These are uh, 33 subject areas we need to negotiate, 33 chapters, substantive chapters. We have opened already 27 chapters. We are working uh, on the rest. Um, so we are quite advanced. So we have always said uh, quality before speed. And it depends on how uh, well uh, we make progress in finding solutions on the specific issues we need to deal with in the accession talks. But I think uh, during the next term, after the election, next four years, we will mid, mid the next term, uh, we, I think we will have advanced quite, quite far. But time will have to show, and, and uh, its substance, it's a substance and solution-driven process rather than deadlines. Uh, do you feel uh, this Nordic Baltic uh, support behind uh, Iceland's in attempts to, 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 to join the European Union? Of course, Norway is not part of the European Union, but uh, uh, this NB8. Do you feel this? Uh, do you feel part of a club of joining European Union? Well, indeed, we have felt uh, very, very good support from the uh, Nordic and the Baltics, the NB8 and um, or NB6. We, within the EU, um, from the outset, when we applied for membership, Swedes were in the, uh, were, were in the presidency, and Kurt Bildt and his team uh, took our application, and, and uh, 
put it on the agenda very quickly of the Foreign Affairs uh, Council. And uh, from the outset, uh, we received both uh, technical and political support from all of these countries. We are off to a very good start with the Lithuanian government. I had a team, a part of my team, here in June of last, last year to go through the issues and start to prepare the Lithuanian presidency. And uh, now I'm here. We also met your team, uh, the Lithuanian team in Brussels in October, uh, to start to coordinate and go through the issues. So we are off to a very, very good start with the Lithuanian incoming presidency. Because, uh, you know, Lithuanians are very, very uh, obliged to Iceland since uh, we are extremely thankful to Iceland for recognizing our independence as being the first country to do so. And Lithuania is going to assume the presidency, uh, European Union presidency, in a few months. Uh, so uh, what is Iceland uh, hoping out of this presidency of Lithuania, uh, of, of the European Union in 2000? Well, we are absolutely convinced that the Lithuanian government will do an excellent job in its presidency. Uh, we can just see how focused and, and uh, business and professional they are, professional like they are in the preparation for the presidency. We w and Lithuania will be in the presidency during a crucial period of our accession process. Um, and we would certainly hope that uh, during the Lithuanian uh, presidency we will be able to close uh, as many chapters as possible of these 16 chapters that are now open. Uh, so I think we will make, uh, and I would certainly hope that we will make good progress during the uh, Lithuanian presidency, and we really appreciate the, the good support we have we received from the Lithuanian government. Thank you very much, and uh, all the best um, in the negotiations with the European Union. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>